Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are Adventuresome Reviews. Today, reading the most morbid book about necromancy and whispering winds and stuff. Titled, Never Die, by Rob J. Hayes. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Samurai, Sh Shinigami, Vengeful Spirits, and an Impossible Quest. Oh. Itami Cho has earned the name Whispering Blade. She is a, is a Shintai warrior, sworn to the path of oaths and honor. But keeping her oaths has always been more difficult than taking them. When Flaming Fist and his bandits attack the city of Ka Kaishi, Itami swears one last oath. She will protect the city and its people at any cost. Ayn has given his has spent his life dreaming of being a hero, and now the god of death has given him a chance. The Reaper has sent him an impossible quest. An eight year old boy sent to stop an immortal emperor. The synopsis in no way does justice to the book. It forgets the most interesting aspect of the story, which is which is that Ayn resurrects Heroes of Legend from the dead to help him on his quest. <laughs> Which is just, you know, as an opening pull, drag to the story, you kind of want to put that in the synopsis. It would have spoiled it a little bit, please. That happens in the first or, like, second chapter. If it it's the, the first chapter. word, it's a spoiler. <sighs> Synopsis should only tell about event... That happened 300 years before the book starts. I see. You can't ruin I guess anything. that's why all yours read like moldy history books. And books should not contain any of the events that happen in the books, lest you spoil the events. We are just to hold sail against spoilers, I see. We are. No spoiled food, no spoiled books. But spoiled food tastes the best. And I mean, to certain paths. I don't like it personally, but I hear some people find it quite adorable. Or adorable? Yes. You're just crazy. You're all over the place. You like spoiled food. I you think it's like, adorable? I don't like spoiled food. I'm simply voicing the parts of the human community that feel that way. I see. Yes. Back to the book, though. One of the things I actually really liked about the book was the entire um, theme or aesthetic. The book is have, has an Asian theme, and if you've read Journey to the West, it is very, not similar, but that tone, that world, that is what the book is very similar to. And I, I really enjoyed this because most fantasy is medieval western, so... Every now and then when you get the chance to read something that's not, that's well handled, because the theme was well handled and consistent throughout the entire book, and not only from the contents of the story, for the world and the characters and the events, but the prose itself built into that slightly. Not so much in a way that it's distracting, but it, all the book was a well-executed um Engine. Adventure into this style of fantasy. And I really enjoyed it because it was different from the Western medieval. Yeah, that is pro possibly the largest draw to the story is how it deviates dramatically from Western uh, medieval fantasy. Yeah. Something I, something I noticed is that the book has a decent grasp of cinematography because in the second chapter, Right? Where Ayn comes and resurrects Itami Cho from the dead. Ooh, uh, she, she wakes up on these stairs leading to the sanctuary, and there's bodies everywhere. It's this bloody battlefield. This eight year old boy in black robes and a red scarf walks barefoot across these cadavers. And it's like, that scene is fantastic! And it's, it's in the middle of a ruined, burning city. Yeah. And this is a consistent tone. Throughout the story, it's just, you have this, the author paints these pictures, and 
the next one, it, 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 you lose a few in the middle of the book, but they're still consistently throughout there and it's just really appealing imagery. Yeah, like they go through bamboo forests and there's Oni and evil spirits and they walk down a road to an inn and the road is lined with impaled bodies. The f- that one's not that. Every other book has impaled bodies. It's I, iconic. I guess, but so, for whatever reason, Why I actually, actually impaled her. I not simply because I actually paid attention to the description of the thing. It was like, it, but it struck me as all. This person hasn't even seen an impaled body before. You shame your family. I am so shameful. But again, progressing on, the characters. The characters themselves were interesting slash enjoyable in their own right. But what I actually really enjoyed about them was their, not their themes, but you have one character and it's a Tommy Chill, the Whispering Blade, and she's a master of their designs, that's the word. And so you, and she's called the Whispering Blade, and the characters are often referred to by their title or their moniker throughout the story. You have the Emerald Wind, you have Iron Gut Shen, you have the Master of Some Such Valley, and then you have Death's Echo, and they're often referred to by these monikers as much as their real names. And all of these characters have really cool designs built into them. Tommy Cho has her two blades, and one blade she never releases and it's bound by her side. And then she has her other blade, which which is the titular whispering blade, and it cuts through anything, and it hums, and it projects sound and it's glass and all the characters have that clear enjoyable design to them. Iron Gut Chen is a tall fat man with a parasol and he's basically indestructible. And while that I've encountered that theme before, it was still an enjoyable theme. Because it was actually used accordingly there's this it's one of those scenes is he's marching toward a castle and there's arrows raining down from the sky the giant swarms you know what what have you and he's completely unfazed and it's these abilities loud these abilities are simple easily encapsulated in one or two words and yet the author expressed the fantasy and just how absolutely powerful they can actually be. And one man attacking a castle and just completely shrugging off the multitude of defenders is pretty an impressive sight. Yeah. And Tommy Cho is, you know, she fights and slays ghosts and... The Emerald Wind... <laughs> it was extremely lackluster. I know! Though. I kept expecting him to whip out a new technique or some such All thing. All he does is just, he teleports places. Which, it's useful, but it's just... He plays second fiddle to every other character in the story. Death's Elko is a sniper, and he kills people from miles away, and... The Tommy Cho slays ghosts and destroys, you know, entire sweeps of forest, and... He, the Grand Master, is basically unbeatable in combat. He pretty much 2v1s Itami, Itami Cho and the Emerald Wind. And both of those are competent fighters. It's just Itami Cho much more than competent. One of the things that sort of is a negative mark for me for the book, the story itself didn't really grasp my interest. Like, whenever I was reading I was enjoying what was happening. The action scenes are generally quite good. Fairly well described, concise, and energetic. But it's one of those books where you, you're you introduced to the plot, and the plot is largely irrelevant until the very end. So you're just going from one step to the next on a journey, and it's more or less just a train of action sequences. And so while the action sequences are good and entertaining in their own rights, that's all the book really is, besides some of the moral quandaries and character interactions. Uh, I'm going to slightly disagree with you. Like, I agree that the plot is almost unimportant to the story. However, this did not pro- this did not detriment my enjoyment of the story at all. It didn't all. detriment my enjoyment of the story, but the story could have used a little bit more of the actual plot in the first 80% of the book. I don't, once again, I don't necessarily feel the plot was necessary because the characters 
and the theme of the world w- was enjoyable in and of itself. I'm not saying the book wasn't enjoyable. I know. I'm saying that there was no story. I'm not in the punishing movie. the book for having a plot that it doesn't waste any time on, per se. Because the plot was, for me, or, I mean, I mean, story's about the relationship between characters, because you have four of them fine, but there's, you only, only one of the characters had, like, a real narrative progression to them. They had nice camaraderie, commod, commod, whatever it is. Camaraderie? That doesn't sound right. Camaraderie. Come on, come on. Ah, I can't say even that. Ah, ah, superior vocalizer. And they had good um, chemistry as well, but none of them really change. Only one of them has like a real narrative arc in of himself, and so while they're enjoyable to interact, again, there's no... There's no character progression. Progression in the story in of itself. Yeah, I, I'd probably agree with you more than... The one character that had that character arc is... That's probably the one thing I might live against the story is that I did not really buy that. I agree. And that's probably another part where I... Why I... So, um, I, I feel this is not too spoilerish. Yeah, it's a character arc. People expect that. I'm gonna spoil it anyways, because I can do what I want. Ha ha ha. You can die. Yes, I can. old age and crippling diarrhea. <laughs> well, that's... One way to curse somebody. So the character with the most prominent character arc is the Emerald Wind. Emerald Wind starts out as a bandit and he is a bandit. He burns, kills, steals, and it's... He sets up... The author sets up this track record of villainy and he's a unpleasant sort. He's boastful, a little bit... Not necessarily cowardly, but a little bit cowardly. He doesn't go out of his way to do anything for anybody else. He betrays his companions really early on, and he does so consistently throughout the first half of the book. He whines. And the problem, and my problem with this is that he never had a moment of redemption. He did have a moment of redemption, but there was no... I, I never forgave him for being a bandit. He doesn't really earn his redemption in the course of the book, because... You're bound, the book is somewhat fairly long, not incredibly long, but 150,000 words or whatever. But you're juggling five, six characters, so he doesn't... The other five of whom are much louder and much more active in the story than he is. Emerald Wood's pretty active and loud, it's just... Well, but like, if we compare him to Iron Gut Shen, who is very vibrant in his personality and goes through and he acts consistently. Or Tommy Cho, who goes... Well, Tommy Cho is the main character, so... Yes, but still, she acts of her own volition throughout the entire book. Mm-hmm. Emerald Wind does not. He has exactly two moments where you see the glimmerings of potential. One I actually really quite enjoyed, but I don't know if it was intentional or not. And the, the, and the other is just an incredibly minor thing. And so the one I really enjoyed is they get into a fight with a dragon, right? And uh, and, they, and he's all beaten and battered up, and they drag him back to their um, camp, and he's and his line is see to this other person first, right? And that other person says, "No, I am fine." See to that person. C to the Emerald Wind. The Emerald Wind is much worse. Whereupon the Emerald Wind then has this thought of, see, that is why I'm not a hero. I would never forego healing for somebody else. Despite having instantly just done that two seconds before. And that is a fantastic... He's completely unaware of his own hero heroism. I remember really liking that moment too. But that is like the only time... It's like... it's This is... A, the author walks a thin line. I don't know if that was intentional throughout the story. I, I imagine that was intentional. I think so too, but but it's never really reached its fruition because he never, in of himself, decides to step forward as the hero. It is all, he never reaches that catharsis of where he realizes it or he steps forward into being a hero, right? He never, he even in, the, in his climactic role in the final battle, he is forced into it. The, there's not, there's never payoff to his narrative arc. 
which is really disappointing because that one scene where he tries to get somebody else healed first is so enjoyable. And it's layered with so much just character potential and personality. Yeah. You have any more thoughts? I did not buy the um, revelation at the end. It might have just been because it's too complicated and I glossed over the, the wrong word or two, but I, I, did, I don't know. It's like the revelation worked, but the math behind it and the way the author... I guess it was a little bit, um, a wee, like, the timing of the book is a little bit finicky, but it's also one of those things that you knew it was, um, that there was something weird going around from the very first start of the book, mm -hmm. and it, it, it didn't really bother me that we didn't know it exactly. It bothers me because I, I still don't understand the math behind it. Simp the simple math behind the time? Yeah, the timeline. The timeline is... It's, I don't understand the timeline at all. It is glossed over a little bit, but it's at the very end, and it's a minor detail. Mm -hmm. Not enough for me to really subtract any points off of it. The prose is pretty solid in the most part. Yes. Completely not overwrought. Yeah. All things told, there were... A very well constructed book opening. Solid prose, good character. I thoroughly enjoyed the book. It's probably one of my favorites so far. Simply because of the um, enjoyable theme and yeah. some, like, a, an understated thing that we don't. The plotting book was quite solid. Like, while some of the events were, um, like, not enough story, some of the events and the turnings I really enjoyed. Like that one story where the Emerald Wind had to be the imposter. I really liked that development. It was just a really neat, cool little thing. And there's other elements throughout that I really just enjoyed how the actual plot points of the book clung together. Yeah. Uh, so I would probably give the book about four stars. Four. I really enjoyed my reading, but I there was only a couple of times where I really went, I really wanted to keep reading when I was done. I actually read. felt I actually felt I want extra want to read the book consistently throughout. Yeah, so I probably can give it four stars, four and a half stars. To goodbye. Wait, wait, wait! I wait for no man. You will wait for me because, because I am your overlord and an, an, a divine entity. So you have to wait for me. A message You're from our non-existent sponsors. If you unless you want to finish with your retort. You have the appearance of Hephaestus. The, what's the word I want? Trustworthiness? The actual heroism of Loki and the adapt, not the adaptability, that's actually worse. <laughs> I was going to say the adapt adaptability of Set, which is really not a good idea because if I remember correctly, Set is a god of chaos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Osiris is the god of death, so Set is his chaos. Yeah, so now you may continue. I have grown tired of the star system, and so I am revolutionizing it entirely based on my own qualms and whims. We are going to start assigning doom points to books. Yes, and each doom point <laughs> is worth one star. <laughs> Fine, if you want to go. But each doom point determines our. Thoughts on how likely the book is to do take over the absolute world and start a new religion. So, thoughts of the doom of days and such not. Expect that next time. Au revoir. Goodbye. Fare thee well, our future friends. <laughs> <laughs>